Okay, welcome. We're here to have a spiritual discussion about autoimmune and chronic pain, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, all of all of the things that so many people are haunted with or struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's very real. I have to be honest. Um I don't even think that I've like really identified as someone with autoimmune um, in recent years. Um, and I don't talk about the physical body very much intentionally because um, I try to develop a certain level of mastery or expertise before I teach about something. That's why you also don't hear me talking too much about parenting or giving parenting advice. <laughs> And I'm like, let's see how my kids turn out before I suggest I know what I'm talking about, about anything. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, I believe it's like either you want to develop a certain level of your own work in order to teach someone about something. Um, so I've kept kind of kept, I've been doing my own work on both of those areas but with respect to my physical body, because my physical body is where my work is. So I've done 30 some odd years of emotional, spiritual, mental layer work. I feel really confident in talking about the mental body and the emotional body and all of the spiritual work, right? You don't see me wavering in my confidence when I teach Ayurvedic psychology or I write my books. However, my work, my diligent daily work has been around my body, around body image, around uh, what do I eat, around autoimmune, around Bartonella, uh, around chronic infection, around chronic hives, around all of the physical. That's where my work is. So, and I'm not saying I don't have emotional work that I do every day, but but my physical body is is the loudest. It speaks the loudest to me. And so um, I once went to a, uh, an astrologer who said to me, and it was of the Vedic tradition, he said, you will either need 100 healers or you will have the power of 100 healers. I was like, that's so freaking true. The difference between whether you will need the 100 healers or you will have the power of 100 healers will be your spiritual practice. Now, this was maybe 12 years ago, and I had a hint of what he was saying because... I had had autoimmune from a very young age. I had bulimia from 13 to 15. I had chronic constipation and ur urticaria hives. I, you know, I had lots of noise coming from my physical body really, really young. So I, I had, I had gone to doctor after doctor. Can you fix me? Can you fix me? Can you fix me? From the age of like 16 years old. So by this point, when I was told this, I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, when I was pregnant and got a cold, I split, I had dislocated ribs while I was pregnant. So this was not a big surprise to me. And it has, in fact, been exactly my experience that my work with healing my physical body has everything to do with my mental, emotional, and spiritual work, especially the autoimmune and the pain that starts here and now it's over here. And then I just pinched a nerve and then my hip just went out and then all of that. So how do those two things relate? How do we do our mental, emotional, and spiritual and chronic work on our physical body. Well, let's look. Things don't settle into the physical body. They start as 
uh, karma. And then we have energy and thoughts and emotions and energetic blockages. And then they settle into the physical body. So the physical body is the last place something will land, right? So it makes sense that if we want to get to root cause of anything that's showing up on the physical layer, we'll need to work it on the more subtle layers. But here's the problem. We're really impatient beings, and we, we all have some level of attention deficit, meaning we want results. It should be fixed now. But if something that took literally lifetimes to create settles into our bodies, it's probably not realistic to think that in the one month we're focusing on the issue and it has our attention that it's just going to go away. I'm not saying that that's not possible. And that's where I've always had reservation in teaching anything about this or just sharing my process on autoimmune. Because... The enlightened people could probably think my body's healed and have their body healed. Joe Dispenza fixed his spine in a matter of X number of years, rebuilt his vertebrae spiritually, and then poof, he could do that at the physical layer of the body. I can do that on the mental and emotional and manifestation, but I'm not as quick in doing it in the physical layer of the body. And it's not as black and white for me with autoimmune. So those of us with autoimmune know this very important fact, which is if something goes out of balance in our bodies, if we get upset or we go through stress or we have childhood trauma or uh, that rises up to the surface or we are not sleeping or we go through hormonal changes or we whatever, if something throws off the balance, our eating changes, then we'll have a flare-up. Can I have a nod of heads? Yeah? We'll have a flare-up. If we don't take impeccable care of ourselves. Now, if you haven't gotten to the point of working with your autoimmune such that you know that you need to have a clean diet and you can't eat sugar and you probably can't eat dairy and you need to eat your vegetables, but they need to be somewhat cooked because you may not have enough digestive fire to digest those vegetables, right? All of the idiosyncrasies of the digestive system and the detoxification system, the elimination system of our bodies. And we have to be pooping. And we have to figure out how to get ourselves pooping, right? Real basic things. We need our sleep. If we don't sleep, then our vata gets imbalanced. And if vata gets imbalanced, then we get a flare-up. And if we get a flare-up, right? I don't think there's any person with autoimmune who is exempt from that. I was on a call with a client the other day, and she said, well, I just can't wait until I can eat like other everybody else. I'm like, oh, you have an expectation that one day you're going to be able to just pop donuts and, and be normal. Okay, that's a belief. I don't have that belief. I believe that my autoimmune has taught me how to care for myself impeccably and to prioritize my self-care, my sleep, my eating, my Epsom salt baths, my herbal regimen, my antioxidants, my whatever my emotions. So my autoimmune got such to a point that if I got really angry with my daughters from my solar plexus, I would feel my nerves burning. So I literally wasn't able to feel the feeling of rage. I just forgot if I wanted to stay healthy. I don't see that as a bad thing. I don't see my autoimmune and my spiritually, intuitively sensitive body and being that needs impeccable care. I'm kind of like, all right, body. Oh, okay. All right. You're not going to take that. I get it. I get it. Rage is not good for the body. All right. So I don't see my autoimmune as a bad thing, just as I don't see negative emotions as a bad thing. My negative emotions are my emotional guidance system saying, hey, something's out of alignment in you 
or in your relationship or the way you set something up. I don't bat my negative emotions away and say, get out of here. I don't want to feel that resentment. I'm like, oh, resentment. What's going on, self? What do I need? What have I not listened to? How do I learn from this resentment? What did I not set up in a way that's integrous? The same is true with my physical body. Now, let's say autoimmune is just an undiagnosed underlying infection, which is what my belief is. And let's say that when my self-care gets out of balance, it will flare up and say, boo, beep, beep, just like the resentment. Beep, beep, beep. Lost balance. Didn't listen to yourself. You, your mind says go work 10-hour days, but your body says, uh-uh, hold up, wait a minute. Get the hell out of there. That's not a fit for you. Thank you very much. So what is it? Now we're, we're part of the culture where we listen and feel our negative emotions. But what is it about our physical body giving us signals that we are intolerant and we feel entitled to not have that? It's karma. It's just karma. But we're not being punished by our karma. It's just something from the past is showing up in the present as a message for us to transmute. If we go into resistance, what we'll do is that which we resist persists. Oh, I've got the pain in my shoulder. Oh, this pain. Oh my God, I've got this pain. And now I have to go to the chiropractor to get out the spider work. I'm so sick of this shoulder. Why can't the shoulder behave? Think about it. If you had a toddler, who had an infection in their brain, which I did. I had a nine-year-old who got an infection in her brain and it was showing up as defiance. And you went into resistance and were just like, shut up, shut up already. Would you just shut the fuck up? Stop your whining. That's not very compassionate. That's not what love would do. So if your shoulder is screaming because of chronic whatever and you're in resistance to it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's doing it again. Oh, I did. I started doing this centering exercises like this. I was going like this for like two weeks. I was like, I can't lift my right shoulder because I pinched a nerve. Because my body's like, no, you have to listen, to listen to me. So what if I didn't hate that part of me? What if I wasn't in resistance? What if I actually cared about that part of me and was like, oh, you're hurt. How can I help you? Let me listen to you. Let me love you. Let me love this pain. Let me be with this pain. Let me call the divine into this pain. Let me surrender into this sensation that I'm calling pain. When we work with people with emotional issues, we don't say, let's get rid of this emotion. We get soaking wet with the emotion. We go straight to the death fear of the emotion. We sit in it. We're with it in our awareness. So Eckhart Tolle talks about presence. This is it in action. It's not hating the shoulder that's loud. It's asking it what it needs. If you've been a parent, please try on your parenting. Even if you were not such a good parent like I was when my kids were toddlers, because I was impatient and like in resistance the whole time. I'm not gonna lie. But now I can see, oh, what do you need? Oh, your belly hurts? Oh, okay, let's be there. So if you are a natural caregiver that can be present to other people's needs, why wouldn't your shoulder or your hip or the burning in your nerves be something that you tend to with such love? I had a teacher, a spiritual teacher who would say, just love the cancer. Just love it. Love it straight out of your body. Love it. So any resistance, summary point, any resistance we have 
to what's going on in our body will create the persistence of that condition. So how do we get rid of, listen to the language, how do we resist the resistance? We have to embody that. We have to get to know, oh, look at me, I'm resisting my shoulder. Oh, look at me, I'm resisting my stomach gurgling. Oh, look at me. We have to go into the vision of Maya Kusha, the awareness layer of the body, just to see, oh, I am absolutely in resistance to this sensation in my body. And I actually don't want to feel my body because this sensation scares me. So what do we do about that? We go into the sensation. Oh, it feels like a little like stabby pain, or it feels like it's warm and it's moving. And I call it nausea, but it's like this warm moving thing in my stomach. How do I be with that sensation? It's just sensation. Most of the people I know with autoimmune are feeling chronic heaviness, meaning a sensation of heavy or chronic anxiety, which is like the nerves are like fried and loud. What if that is a sensation that you can be with without going into suffering and resistance to the sensation? It's just sensation. And no, we're not entitled to not have it because it's part of our karmic makeup. It's here for us to learn, to teach us. Our soul came to this earth with a nervous system so that we could learn through the lessons of light and dark. Whether we like it or not, this is the human condition. And our bodies are teaching us through this physical sensation. So what if we just allowed it to be sensation? And so sensation doesn't have to be interwoven with suffering and resistance. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. I'm encouraging you to allow the sensation of the pain or the discomfort that's in your body right now and to peel away all of the thoughts and emotion you have that have gotten interwoven into the sensation such that now you feel sensation and suffering is right there. Misery is right there. So what if you transmuted the mental and emotional suffering? I'm not saying it's not warranted. I get it. I I live it. I hear you. But the suffering is an option, even though the sensation may not be. Now, you might want to slap me upside the head by saying that. Because these have been so interwoven, maybe for generations, that you can't see how this sensation in your body, the burning in your belly, for me, it's burning in my, in my nerves or the gurgling or the constant discomfort in the gut or whatever it is, sensation. Suffering. So first we have to notice it. Wow, what are my thoughts and my emotion about this pinched nerve? I mean, if I stay really still, I don't feel the pinched nerve. What does it look like to build gratitude that when I don't move my arm, I feel good? Building the neural synaptic pathways of our brain to actually feel gratitude for feeling good in the space of feeling bad. This is part of the work. How do I wire my body into the gratitude for what is working so that I stop amplifying that which is not working. Okay, so what you resist persists. What you resist amplifies as 95% of your experience. So what if we brought the 20% of pain that I'm feeling because my suffering and my resistance to the pain has now lessened. So the pain is just simply a sensation of discomfort in my body without all of the negative thoughts and emotions and woe is me and I just want to die, I'd rather, all of the stuff does not have to go with this stuff. I know it doesn't feel like a choice. I had the sacred privilege of, I've been on this Lyme journey for 
for decades now, I'm still alive and functioning. Even though I thought I was going to die at every point. And I was part of communities that would commune around Lyme. I moved from upstate New York to California so I could go outside without the fear of Lyme. And I got this by a, a wood tick with Rocky Mountain spotted fever and got the sickest that I'd ever been with any of the other co infections. What you resist persists. I kept getting my lessons. I kept accumulating different symptoms until I got the lesson. So in those Lyme communities was a hyper focus on the symptoms, on the ailments, on how hard it is, on how nobody understands us, on how no one, I'm not seen or heard, or no one can be compassionate, and how it gets in the way of our connections. All of this. So what got amplified? What gets amplified? when we have group and community suffering around trauma, around symptoms, around disease, typically this gets amplified, the suffering. So how do we address this without spiritually bypassing it, love and lighting it, and disconnecting from our bodies? Because that's how the new age spiritual community will deal with pain. They'll pretend it's not there. Their symptoms will get louder until their symptoms are so loud they're bedridden, right? Have you seen that? So the answer is not pretend it's not there and disconnect from your body so you don't hear the signals. Symptoms, many of which manage by keeping an impeccable lifestyle. And if they're not, then asking our soul and our divine to start giving us natural solutions for what's going on in our bodies, an understanding of the root cause, clarity. This earth has for us all of the solutions and the healing that we need. So when I surrendered into this connection of, oh, my rate, when I get so pissed at my daughter for her entitlement, I can feel it in every nerve of my body. So first was for me to check that vibration and work with that emotion. And when I did that and I kept asking the divine for a solution, I came, I, I, I found these obscure teachings around neuropathy from Stephen Berner, who's just passed. And I found one herb. And that one herb, if taken, makes all my neuropathy go away. So what if the earth does have that which can balance us and keep these infections at bay? We've all heard, we all have cancer cells in our bodies. We all will have Lyme disease. We all will have Epstein-Barr disease. We will all have COVID in our bodies. And COVID long haul is going to start opening people up. I'm very hopeful about long-term infection and the, and the long-term effects. Because if you look at the long-term effects, they're all autoimmune. But now we know COVID is the cause of those things. So I do believe the scientific community will catch up, maybe not in this lifetime for us. So we need our spirituality and our intuition to guide us. What can help me with this? That level of prayer and manifestation for guidance, for comfort, for love, for the ability to move this pain out of my body right now. And a deep willingness to be with the fact that we have a physical body that talks loudly to us. It just does. Most of us are empaths. Most of us are intuitives. Most of us feel everything. Maybe Joe Schmo over here, who's not as 
upper chakra attuned just doesn't feel the infection in the body. We do. We can feel it. That's okay. So we keep doing our spiritual practices. In the next few weeks, I'm going to teach you the practices that I do to work with my physical body and bringing the light into my physical body and moving the pain in my physical body and activating my full, pure, perfect divine blueprint within my physical body. I will share that. There is spiritual work with the physical body that we can do. However, if we do it from a place of suffering and misery and over-focus and, and I hate my body, if we cannot do it from a place of love, it, it will be very hard to do. So over the next week or two weeks, what I ask you, what I beg you to do is just don't try to fix this suffering. Just watch it. Just journal on it. Just become incredibly aware of your resistance to the sounds of your body. And if you will, start to build the beliefs of how you're in front of a computer right now. You're functioning. Do you know what helped me the most? I know this sounds crazy. My husband and I got life insurance at some point and I had all these autoimmune and I'm like, I'm not going to get the life insurance. My life insurance is going to be expensive. I can't remember what it was. It was so many years ago. It was over 20 years ago. And my life insurance was actually cheaper than his because he had his blood pressure was a little higher or whatever. And I was like, huh? Don't they know I'm going to die? Don't they know I'm in this horrible condition? Don't they know? No, Kim. That was a data. That was a data check that I just have a noisy body. I just feel everything. I just have pain that moves. I feel a lot of sensation. Doesn't mean I'm going to die. That's part of the suffering. That's part of the belief that if I feel this pain in my body, it means I'm going to die. It means I have lymphoma. So what beliefs do you go into? That's my, my belief. Do you know what I did? I was like, oh my God, this is going to build up on my limbs. And so I went and started a bunch of lymph work done and it reawoke one of the infections in my body that was already dormant. And it created the problem that I was trying to fix through my fear. What if, what if instead of I'm going to die and this is going to spread and this is going to get worse and our projection of our pain into the future, what if we just stayed in the present moment and observed that we're holding a cup of tea and we're laughing and we're with each other and we're living life when our body is actually very wise and is still functioning and getting through the day, even though you might not feel good. What if we affirmed and amplified what's actually working every day? Wow, I'm up. Wow, my body got me to work. Wow, I just digested that plate of food. Wow, look at that great poop. My body's excreting. Wow, I got a full night's sleep last night. That's rare. So happy. What if we affirmed what was working? So we can build the neural pathways within our brain and the capacity, the capacity to believe that something's going right in our bodies. Because once we think a negative thought about our body, our mother cells and our cells are like the most obedient corporation. I'm going to talk about this another time. But think about it. You're the CEO of a brand new corporation. A hundred employees come to your to your meeting, uh, to launch the organization. They're so hungry. They want to know exactly what you want them to do. And you start the meeting off with, my body is broken. And these are your cells, by the way. Your cells are the people in the organization working for, your, for you. And you start the meeting off by, my body is broken. This, this organization is broken. Everything has gone to shit. We're all going to die. I don't know your cells are listening and going, okay, everything's going to shit and it's going to die. Got to break stuff down. Gotcha. Get to work. That is the cell signaling that we who are suffering from autoimmune are talking to ourselves 
to our whole corporation. Our cells are sitting there waiting to get the signal from you of what it needs to produce. We didn't produce our bodies every whatever, seven days, seven months, I forget. So how, if we do not start to work our beliefs, our emotions, our reactions, our death fears around our chronic pain and autoimmune, then we can't do this work, which is pretty straightforward. So those are your marching orders over the next week or two. We're going to talk about aging and menopause next week, I believe. And then at the end of the month, we're going to start doing the work and you'll have a recording to do this work. So hang in there. Do your pre-work. Watch yourself. Watch your mind. Build yourself a set of beliefs about your body that your cells and the workers in your body can go get done. You have a, a trillion cells that you're making orders to subconsciously through your suffering, your negative beliefs, and your negative emotions about your body. I do anyway. What if, what if you started to build a belief system where the organization can deliver health and well-being and love in every function of the Krebs cycle? My cat just meowed to say, yeah. All right. So keep me posted. Go to my Facebook timeline underneath the post of this and just tell me how you're doing with it or comment within the recording of the YouTube. I want to hear what beliefs are there and what beliefs and emotions about your body you're working on this week. And I love you. More to come. Namaste.